Well, welcome back to another episode of the Know Your Numbers podcast. This is Chris McCormick. Today's guest is John Coffrey. Uh, those that listen know that we like to talk faith, fitness, and finance. And John checks all those boxes, man. He is an athlete. He is a uh, a wizard when it comes to finance, and he's a man of God. So I'm excited to have this conversation with him, a uh, fellow Bostonian now, uh, recently, I guess. But uh, John, welcome to the show. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. My pleasure, man. If you don't mind just giving a quick introduction of yourself, what you got going on, and and uh, we'll get right into it. Yeah, man. So I, thankfully, I'm uh, in an industry that gets me in front of a lot of people. So one of the people being you. Yeah. <laughs> we love that aspect just because a ton of interesting uh, stories and, and different walks of life, honestly, being um, in the financial services and giving people, you know, the best advice as to, you know, truly what it means to get financially free and really trying to honestly be trying to financially organized as well. Honestly, it's been a very bright spot. So I think in my career and, you know, being able to understand people's goals, their concerns, things that kind of leave them confused and, and, you know, kind of leave them unfocused mm -hmm. has, has given me such an ability as such a platform to speak on. So I, I can't say good enough good things about it. Amen, man. Yeah. And uh, we met through a, I think it was a networking event here in Boston or online networking event that, that we got plugged into. And uh, there was kind of an immediate synergy. We both knew that that we serve similar clients and uh, that we had similar goals. So I'm grateful that you were willing to to reach out. And for those listening, uh, at the end of this show, obviously we'll we'll let John give a plug, but do feel free to reach out to him. He knows his stuff, and um, he's always willing to help, man. And that's that's I think where we can start is uh, your willingness to serve. I know when we've sat down. Uh, in the past for coffee or whatever it was. Uh, one thing that came to mind, one thing that struck me was the way that you approached uh, the service that you're in. You know, um, you mentioned getting a feel for what people's goals are, but also uh, sometimes it can be tough when you're selling certain products, you know, you're in the life insurance industry. And uh, with that comes some difficult discussions uh, depending on the outcome of someone's life but i'm curious john is how you approach your service and how you've developed that service mind and how that's helped you um in the business world and in your life in general absolutely so there are i think being in the field and you know a lot of my colleagues would say we're, we're in the trenches right mm. so kind of having that first hand um, service mentality, being on the front line, so to speak, to uh, really get in the, de the details of what it is that is an issue. Mm -hmm. You know, I think being in a position where I can help and almost, almost seeing such a immediate impact, a sigh of relief that will help whoever I'm talking to, a client of mine, or if it's just a passing individual, just provide them with us some sort of piece of information that will provide some set, a sense of uh, a leave or relief rather mm -hmm. and being able to be utilized in that in that respect and ultimately you know because truly I I've one thing I was able to take away thus far and you know the the years I've been in the industry it you truly don't understand what somebody is going through mm -hmm. at the moment everything can be very surface level look very nice but there are a lot of different concerns that can be presented when you're you know uh, i'm fortunate enough well my job is to ask questions right so i i need to know all these nitty-gritty things and yep. you know, all the you know what really kind of the, the pressure points is what of of, of, a, of a person's plan ideally would be right. and you know having those conversations has ultimately given me uh more of a push to serve because i see how much of an uh of a disservice i think education as a whole yep. has 
given our society just because there's been a lack of it so wow. i i feel very empowered in that respect yeah man that's awesome and i'm so glad you touched upon that because that opens up a, a can of worms in this discussion and i love i love when things happen like that but uh it brings up a good point john is how a guy like you has gone about educating himself financially obviously you have your licenses and you've gotten your degrees but it goes far deeper than that because there's a lot of people out there that have been there and um they use it for all the wrong reasons so i'm curious as to what your approach to educating yourself has been and how you use that same approach to educating others given the lack of education in in our systems oh absolutely i think there's uh -huh. It's it's definitely a, a pressure point there for me personally, because I, you know, very fortunate enough that, you know, I've always been surrounded with a ton of good resources in my life, but how I've been able to show the learning aspect for me was particularly, I didn't feel like I was well informed what it mm -hmm. meant to truly retire or what it meant to truly invest for our future mm -hmm. to offer protection for a particular scenario. I think a lot of that education was a lot of question marks to me. Mm -hmm. um, for me personally, I am just naturally somebody who I, I joke around. I say, Oh, I'm always, I'm a nerd at heart. Yeah. So honestly, I, I tend to ask a lot of questions <laughs> and even it's just, very basic things even I'm, I'm at the doctor's office i had why why are we taking this type of uh -huh. measurement no, why why are we asking this or what kind of direction we're looking at here and it's just a lot of different things have um kind of dominoed throughout my life where i you know ultimately without planning it's you ultimately have no vision so without mm -hmm. a vision you can't really picture exactly where you want to be so I think that's just at a basic fundamental life lesson. And I think people, you know, just generally like, you know, the, when it comes to a story, people like pain, that was the probably the biggest question mark I had for my life because I want, I know I wanted my life in the future when I'm 50, 60, you know, going into my seven, the retirement years, I wanted for myself a nest egg, you know, I want mm -hmm. to build such a, you know, a, a big nest egg for myself that I'm able to, you know, enjoy the things that I truly would have missed if I hadn't, you know, and yeah. I think the, what gets me going is definitely understanding that I'm young. Mm -hmm. I, I'm very, I'm, I'm equipped with a lot of good resources mm -hmm. and being able to speak at a platform where I am, where my job allows me to just funnel my energy towards it. Yep. I, it's, it's hard to, hard to not succeed in that. Yeah. So. That's awesome, man. And I love the way you uh, bring your heart into it and uh, you come full force, man, because it shows who you are and that you really do want to help. And uh, that's what it's all about, man. I, I, you mentioned the youth factor and being young and sometimes I think that can be a, an obstacle to overcome, right? We think that we're too young and therefore we shouldn't pursue these opportunities. Or why would somebody with money understand or look to the, guy, the younger guy to um, manage his money? And so I'm speaking from personal experience. I've struggled with that in the past. And people have asked me, like, do you ever deal with imposter syndrome or something of the like where you don't think you have it all because there's people with a lot of money coming to you for solutions so how have you john gone about that have you faced that or, or are you just 100 percent confident all the time and, and don't have to worry about <laughs> those kind of problems oh man it's i for sure early on have struggled with those types of conversations. Absolutely. I think I'd be, um, I'd be the imposter myself if I said no. <laughs> so I, but honestly, it, it really comes down to at the end of the day, you have to know your worth, understand what you are bringing to the table, understanding yep. that value behind it. Because at the end of the day, like I mentioned, 
pain is pain. If you haven't mm-hmm. talked about these, or at least, you know, at the minimum, have had conversations with the ones you love yep. with these particular, you know, whatever it is, service, it could be anything. Mm-hmm. It's going to, it's going to hit you and rub you in the wrong way, you yep. know, or it's going to bring up a thought that may go back to having a, the conversation with a loved one, mm-hmm. because ultimately, you know, if you understand the importance behind whatever it is that you're doing, I don't think that there are going to be many things in life that are going to shake you if, yep. if anything, because right. ultimately at the end of the day, if you're being placed in a position to make change, it's, it's going to be met with a lot of resistance. Yeah, absolutely. There's no uh-huh. thing around it, yep. but you know, walking with that confidence, it's, you know, don't get me wrong. Get you, if there are those, there are going to be the moments where you are going to have those. Um, and in my industry, we call it the upside down bell curve, where it's you start, you start, and you're uh-huh. talking to anybody and everybody, but yeah. then you come to this dip where it's like you're understanding that things are getting really tough, and you're going mm-hmm. through those seasons where it's very, almost unbearable to get through because you know financially you want to sustain yeah. yourself. Right. But if you're able to sustain yourself through that, you see the up curve on the other end. And it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> so that's awesome, man. Wow. I've, uh, <laughs> I haven't heard it said like that, but that is kind of how I've said it myself. Like I always find that there's a battle and then right after the battle, there's a glorious victory. And that's kind of, uh, I think where <laughs> the Bible comes in and, and that's kind of where I shape my life is knowing that whenever there's a hard time, there's something else. Uh, far greater on the other side of that but I like the uh, as a numbers guy I like the bell curve analogy too <laughs> oh, absolutely it's I think we we see eye to eye so clearly on that yep. it's, yeah yeah man and that's that's a that's another great point I do want to uh, shift gears a little bit and turn to your uh, athletic background because when we spoke off camera and a couple weeks ago we talked about your um, lacrosse career in college and how there was a battle in that and you had known that there was a calling or that you were pursuing something that you wanted in your heart and it didn't come easy. Um, there were challenges along the way. You got cut. You, you um, probably had some doubts there and then, but ultimately you came to victory. So I'd love to hear John, how that's well, a little bit more on that. And then also how it shaped your worldview and your approach to your career. Sure. So yeah, that was, that was a time. That was a time for sure. I think ultimately for me was, you know, you kind of talk about, you know, I mentioned pressure points. I think at a life outlook, um, if you look at things that, you know, kind of gut check moments, things that are able to really truly help mold your character, those things, that time was definitely one of those times. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I think that was probably my first big kind of, you know, adult gut check, gut check moment, just ultimately because I found myself in a place where I was almost up against the wall. You know, I, I was so used to, you know, just naturally gifted. And I was, you know, thankful. Like I said, there was a lot of good things going my way up until this point. Mm-hmm. So being at a, at a crossroads where I'm like, okay, um, I, I'm, I get to college and I think I'm this hotshot athlete. <laughs> and then, you know, ultimately I wanted to play a division one sport in college and it was lacrosse for me. And ultimately I wanted to be you know, I want I want to have that stature being on that team. I wanted to have that name associated to my resume. You know, I want I wanted all those things. And, you know, thankfully I was able to get there. But ultimately being when I first arrived, I had was met with a, you know, talk about no, nothing good is met with met with zero force. It's always right. with force. Yeah. I was met with a lot of force. So I was mm. found myself in a position where I was cut from the team once, not once, but twice. Yeah. And I found myself 
you know, really digging deep. And a lot of these times where I, I was training, preparing, every year became almost, I would say, more intense for me personally and emotionally because I first year I was cut. I was like, wow, that's the biggest gut check I've had in my life thus far. Yep. And then I trained so hard. And then throughout a whole year's duration, while still maintaining some sort of uh, level with the team, I, I knew if I wasn't a part of the team, I at least wanted to get as close as possible. Yep. So I became a manager for those three to uh, two years. Wow. And was a manager for both full seasons. I was doing everything. I was like almost like a Cinderella kind of story because <laughs> I had it's hysterical because I think you think Cinderella and mm. I was the guy washing clothes. I was the guy preparing all the all the all the uniforms on game day. I was mm. doing anything and everything just to get me in the same environment as these guys. Because for me personally, that was something that I truly wanted to attain and being able to get everything as much as I could of that, out of that experience uh, and not playing was the best thing for me, but it ir irked me down to the core mm -hmm. because I knew that if it wasn't for if me, if I wasn't upheld by my faith in God, if I wasn't understood that this is going to take some serious willpower and, you know, you're going to be uncomfortable probably you know a good significant amount of time throughout the day that you are awake because of this is all you know playing a big component in your head mentally yeah. you know all these things were for me ultimately something that I was able to lean on and say all right this is I can I can put up or shut up you know yeah. that can saying because at the end of the day if I really wanted this it's something that I'm going to go 100% on absolutely mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And that's, again, a testament for who you are. And I mean, it's got to go back to the way you were raised. But uh, brother, I love to hear it. Even even now, it's like <laughs> bringing chills to my my spine, just thinking about the way the grit that you had at such a young age, because I mean, college, man, I mean, athletes have a different mindset for sure. But uh, college, you can go one of two ways. And uh, you chose one. I, I happened to choose the other where I was like, ah, oh, this doesn't matter. I'm going to just uh, blow myself up and just <laughs> live live uh, recklessly so it's good to see that there are other people making good decisions with their time in college so honor to you for that um and I also I think something you touched upon there is like hanging out with the team even though you weren't on the team per se and I think that goes to uh goes to show like the importance of the people that you hang out with and, and, and the crowd that you keep around and so for me I, I like to think of having mentors and, and building relationships as one of the most important aspects of anything really uh fitness finance career oriented like you want to be around people that have some fruit in their life and so i'd love to hear about how that's shaped you in your career um, i'm sure there's some great mentors in the organization that you're at right now and um i'm sure they've had a positive impact on your life <laughs> absolutely I had, um, I, I, we have an un, uh, unexpected visitor here, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think for me personally, you know, it ultimately for me, I felt such a challenge finding that sense of community. Mm. You know, that was probably the biggest thing, biggest hurdle that I found because, you know, yes, I, I did surround myself as much as I could with people that were like minded and felt like, you know, that they wanted to get something out of the college years, which is, I mean, I'll, I'll, at the end of the day, it's where, you know, everybody at a young age, they're, they're going to college or going to, for a good time. And yeah. that's not, I'm not bashing that by any means. <laughs> I just, I, for me personally, I had a purpose that I wanted to like, get um, out of my whole experience. And I think honestly, it goes back to that whole entire idea of being, being a visionary with whatever mm -hmm. it is you're trying to do with your life. Because honestly, when I'm, when things are tough, it's hard to move without a vision. Yeah. It's hard to move when you're trying to, whatever it is that you're trying to do, get that into some sort of lens as to 
kind of depict what it's supposed to look like for you, you know, and obviously everything that you do is going to put you in a position. Every relationship that you come across is going to refine your, your picture and make things a little more clear, kind of like using the analogy of like redefining your focus on like a lens, you know, right. things are slowly going to get more uh, to that clear picture as yeah. that you truly want. And for me that I wasn't really able to find that true sense of like, community probably until mm -hmm. junior year i think i found myself you know not really dedicating so much time to i want to say much of a social life yeah uh, but i it was for me like, i didn't really have an urge for that you know mm -hmm. there are a lot of times where you know it's you want to enjoy that college experience but i honestly in the moment i didn't think about that yeah it was something that i didn't really see as so much of a valuable part into what I was trying to do, honestly. So that was kind of ultimately what for me was trying to find that sense of community and, you know, honestly, just consistent in my prayer. I, mm. I had, and I tell the story a lot. I know some of my friends know this, but, you know, I wanted to have um, a community around me a friend that I can go ahead and continue to pour into spiritually and just mentally as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, I knew that was going to be a, a hurdle going into college just as a whole. And that was a prayer that I prayed senior year of mm -hmm. high school. Yeah. And I, it wasn't answered until junior year. Wow. So for me, I mean, I would, honestly, it would make sense, but God works in mysterious ways as we know. Yeah. So it's, you know, a lot of times because I was so antisocial, I yeah. was, you know, being, I was put in a position where I didn't have that opportunity. So, you know, it was, it was something that I was truly, truly grateful for when it actually happened. Cause when God answers prayers, wow, it comes in with the, you know, you're like, you know, honestly, yep. so it's for me, I felt I was, you know, being equipped correctly for sure. Yeah, dude. Amen. Amen, man. It's so cool to see. And I think that's such an important point that it did take a few years. Like, I feel like now, nowadays, we want something so quickly, like we can get everything so quickly, right? Everything that we need is at our door in a couple of days, right? Like we order a package, it comes, we order food, it's here in 20 minutes kind of thing. But like, patience is one of the virtues of of the Bible and one of the, the fruits of the spirit. And so um, to hear you talk about that, like a, a three year, four year period of you just praying the same prayer, asking for someone just to, to be a disciple with kind of is, is remarkable. And honestly, John, like your persistence too is, is so admirable at a young age, man. College is a, a weird time. Um, and to, to see that you were just set on the vision at such a young age is, is remarkable because I know, dude, there's people out there like hitting midlife crises and, and not sure that they've been living their life according to a vision that they set out. And so um, for you to, to be so committed to something at such a young age is awesome. I, I'd love to hear, John, is like, how, how do you go about setting your vision now? Like, you don't necessarily have the goal of making a division one lacrosse team but i mean you are serving people every day so i'd love to hear about the vision of john coffrey going forward where where it is now and, and where you see yourself in three to five years as much as you're willing to share <laughs> absolutely i think for me personally i had a ton of uh, a lot of you know you when you look at you know what it is that you try to do for me i thought hey if you're going to do anything and you're going to progress in any way or find some sort of success in whatever it is that you want to accomplish you have to have some sort of mentorship around you mm. i think that was honestly probably the biggest um biggest encouragement for me because i was able to i may on now you know, I'm able to attach myself with so many individuals who are like minded, but additionally have, you know, honestly, just have this raw, unfiltered 
passion of what it is that they want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, you know, you can, you can talk about, but when you talk about it, there's, it's hard to hide the passion. It's mm -hmm. hard to hide whatever it is that you're trying to do um, and, and not showcase some, some sort of emotional uh, euphoria around it because yep. it's, it's giving you the, a, a beautiful platform. Mm -hmm. It's giving you uh, the ability to talk to so many people, you know, all these things for, uh, for a lot of my mentors now are just blank and it's all very at, at a very um, surface level, Yep. They are a very elementary level. It's, it's all there. Mm. So for me, mentorship was a huge thing, right? Being able to get into a routine that has you disciplined with, you know, not only mentorship, but if you want to be a leader, you got to be a reader. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. for me, I had yeah. so many things that I was recommended as far as books and literature you know, there and things that I'm starting to reread now. And it's like all these things are so influential for me because I can go through them as many times as I want. But the say, for example, the first couple of times I went through it, the more and more I dive into it, I pick up more things. And mm. it's I going back to the analogy of being able to redefine that focus yep. um, and clear up the picture for me. I think that was probably those two things is. I, I can't place a value on those. Wow. Amen, dude. And I, I think, I mean, mentorship too, like it, it holds you accountable is the biggest thing. It's like, it, if you're looking up to someone and asking so many questions or asking for insights into what you should be doing next, like in the back of their mind, they're like, all right, so where, where are you going? Like, how's this been? How have my tips served you and, and what have you done with them? So I think that's important. It, even if it's not mentors, just like, crowd of people that are going in a similar direction right they say you're you're the product of the five people you spend the most time with so th those better be some good people if you want to be a good person so I love that take and um, honestly I just love obviously education is is important and it if you aren't a reader you're not a leader or leaders are readers I don't know how the saying goes but you hit it right on the head um, I'm kind of butchering it man I, I did okay so I did before we wrap up, man, I just want to um, honor you for uh, your willingness to share and also your willingness to go after certain things in life. Because I think something that that a lot of churches, believers, faithful people get wrong sometimes is that because we have a God who loves us so much, like it can turn into complacency sometimes. Like we don't have to do anything to earn his love. So some might think we don't have to do anything at all, but uh, John, it's it's a it's inspiring to see a Christian like yourself, a, a good, uh, hearty person, also go after certain things to set up a future for himself and for others. And I think that's a a, a conversation that we need to be more open about having is like being okay to say, yeah, I have these big goals, and I think. I know God put them on my heart, so I'm going to do everything I can to, to make them come into reality. And it seems like that's exactly what you're doing. Absolutely. I think yeah. uh, I'm very, very privileged to be in the position I am today. And just mm -hmm. having that, you know, the, the, uh, hyper, uh, the hypothetical microphone or the yep. metaphorical mi microphone, you know, right. um, I, I, I'm so I feel very encouraged, you know, mm -hmm. so I think every day, every day is this new day and right. every day has its own troubles and its own stresses, you know, ultimately keeping your picture, keeping the, keeping the picture wide, mm -hmm. but keeping the lens pointed wow. is very, I think for me is it changes perspective because, <laughs> you know, being able to address things the way they need to be addressed is you know, what it is, what helps you be intentional and the way you maneuver through your day-to-day -day activities, you know, you want to be purposeful with it in every way you can, but that only comes with, with direction and, and purpose, you know? Yeah. 
That's good, man. I mean, you came with the analogies, brother. You came with the metaphors, and I, I love it. I've learned uh, quite a bit just through this conversation, man. So I just want to honor you, bro. I, I love the way that you show up. I love being able to to link up with you and and run this race as well. I know this is the first or the third, I guess, of many conversations, but uh, I know there will be plenty in the future, man. Before we wrap up, there is one question that I ask all of our guests here on the Know Your Numbers podcast. John Coffrey. What is one truth about money that most people regard as myth? Wow. Um, I would say that it works faster than you think. Mm. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Being intentional with it. It works yeah, come on. faster than you think. Right. I love it. I love it. Well, I, I know that I serve a God of multiplication too. And that that's truth right there is there's exponential growth in all sorts of life, be it financial, spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, wherever you are, uh, you can grow in that regard as long as you're committed and intentional to that, John. So I, I honor you for your intention, uh, the way you show up each and every day, man. I would love for you to just plug uh, anything that you would like to before we hit the uh, stop record button, how can people get in contact with you uh, for anything, financial advice or or life advice as well? Because we need some more John Coffrey in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I think, you know, Forest Hills Financial is the firm. It's, they've done wonders and continue to do wonders. We we are very privileged to, to service everybody. So, you know, being able to, get in contact with people through LinkedIn, through phone, through email, anything. And I'm sure, you know, you'll plug everything, but it's, you know, honestly to have a conversation, it's, yep. it starts at a conversation. Right. So, Amen, bro. Well, honor to you, brother. Uh, I love your heart. I love the way you show up and I'm excited to see what God has in store for you. Let's go. Of course. <laughs> you too, on, man. man. I'm sure I'm encouraged by you and everything and the movement that you're doing here. So, Keep it going. Thank you, brother. I received that. <laughs>